promoting women into <laughs> positions of power. That's my mantra, really. I've never heard you say that. Oh, my back hurts from carrying all my sisters <laughs> all the time. Ow. The office is relaunching. Yeah. I'm here with Sugar Tits again. I had to get her involved in this one because we love The Office, don't we? We bloody love The Office. How many times have we rewatched it? I mean, probably 10, 15, something like that. And I'm talking both versions, like UK and US. They're both very different from each other. The UK one was like the original one. It's fantastic. No one does cringe better than Ricky Gervais. Yeah. David Brent is just painful. <laughs> But then Michael Scott sort of took over. Steve Carell. Steve and, Carell, yeah. And he came pretty damn close to Ricky Gervais, but in his own way. Yeah, you know how I see the difference between the two? Because there's so many episodes, there's so many seasons of the American one, it's like your best friend yeah, sort of thing. Like you can come back to it and you know that you're going to get a laugh, you know it's a good show. Whereas the British one was like this masterpiece. They've come up with this idea and it was just fucking cringe factor, this cringe bomb. Yeah, and it only went for three seasons, I think. Whereas the American one, what did that go for, like uh, seven, eight seasons? No, it was more than that. It was like... I don't think so. Maybe nine, but no more than that. Because the American one one went so long they really developed into the side characters and you, yeah yeah you, know, you became attached to all the characters and learned their background stories and, and they sort of honed their characters a bit better yes i have a wig for every single person in the office you never know when you're going to need to bear a passing resemblance to someone because the UK one was so short, they sort of hadn't grown into their characters. Yeah. Whereas, like, I mean, some of the earlier American officers were fucking just classic. Um, let me ask you, is there a term besides Mexican that you prefer something less offensive? Mexican isn't offensive. Well, it has certain connotations. Yeah, so anyway, there's an Australian reboot. So I saw Steve Merchant tweet this, saying, New office, new boss, streaming on Prime Video, Australia, New Zealand, October 18. And some of the comments he's got are just fucking savage. They've girl-bossed it. And you know how, like, modern Australian comedy can be sometimes? It's just, like, it's pretty PC, and it's, like, all interlaced with feminism, and you go, girl, and it's like Ghostbusters reboot. You know that Ghostbusters shit they made? Oh. God, yeah. And you know what? There have been some bloody cracker female comedians. You know, Kath and Kim. Yeah. Like, this was before, you know, they started injecting all of these social politics issues into scripts and shows. But there have been some really good female Australian comedians. Yeah. And if you're going to do something like this, why not just make a new show? Like, there's been some good Australian shows that are, like, reminiscent of The Office. Like, remember, um, what was it called? Very Small Business? That was all right. Oh, yeah. And there was that other one based at, like, the electrical store. I think there was only a few seasons of it. Anyway, I'll find out what it's called and I'll put it on screen. Yeah, so when I first heard this was coming out, a part of me was like, okay, okay, Australian pride, please don't bugger this up. Like, yeah. I want it to be good. I love The Office. I want it to be successful. But then there's just that big part of me that's like, this is not going to work. And look, we've only seen, like, a two-minute preview. I watched this last night and just, my God, I feel ashamed to be Australian. Anyway, let's watch it big announcement can i have a drum roll please the drum roll lloyd that's how i drum roll mm. oh, that's the first joke to introduce this to the world to try and get people to want to watch this and that was shit yeah what the fuck she's already annoying the crap out i know of me. i know she's like really annoying see like i think when blokes are cringe it's like a little bit lovable and when chicks are cringe they just remind you of fucking hr people who are just i can't even describe how much i dislike hr people to me already it just seems really forced like she's just trying to emulate those two but it's not working yeah and the thing with the American office is it came out pretty soon after the British one like it was within what five years or six years or something but this is like this feels like a reboot because it's like 20 years later you know what I mean is that meant to be Kevin I think that's meant to be Oscar people ask me how can I become a great boss and the answer is having a happy staff that love you Oof. this is a proper HR nightmare See, I reckon that's Oscar. Oscar was always the guy to be like, oh my God, this office is a nightmare yeah, sort of thing. I guess. As of today, we are all back in the office full time. What? Mm? That's not good news. 
That guy eating the peaches, I think he's meant to be Creed. You know how he'd always be eating, like, mung beans or something? Yeah, I'm not sure. Creed was never really a big speaking role, was he? But it's hard to pick just from these tiny little clips who the, you know, who's trying to be who. Or even if they're going that way and trying to reimagine these characters with new Australian actors. I'm promoting you to productivity manager. Yes, sir. Do I want to support the vision of my branch manager? At all costs. Oh. That's Dwight. That's Dwight, for sure. It's a fucking woman. Of course. You can't make Dwight a woman. No. What'd you say before? I said, like, Dwight was funny because he was, like, a devious man. Mm. A devious sort of backwards man. Yeah. And you said, yeah, she just seems like a depressed lesbian. Yeah, she does. Yeah, she does. <laughs> Is this the dark web? No, it's not the dark web. You said Lizzie? Okay. The perks of coming to work. Riling up Lizzie. Flirting. Watching Nick roll up Lizzie. Oh, here we go. There's Jim and Pam. That can't be Pam. Pam was always, like, doable. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? My crow's name is Russell. Hello, Rusty. How are you, mate? <laughs> Nick, no. <laughs> See, they're trying too hard. They're trying too hard to make her Dwight. And Jim, the Australian Jim, has obviously got that same pranking vibe going on with Dwight. Yeah. And you know why that's not going to fucking work? Because... because it's a dude doing it to a chick. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so it's just like sexual harassment. It's yeah. just going to be some harassment claim. That's right. Like, this is Me Too movement bullshit. Yeah. He wouldn't be fucking doing this to a chick. It's not going to work. Yeah, bro. you don't fuck around with your chick workmates. Yeah. That's a recipe for disaster. We lost one of our own last week. Brian died. We were so close. He's always in my heart. Oh, is he the tall, sad one? Yeah. No, he was the short and smiley one. Yeah, that's what I meant. What nationality is he? Uh, what sexual identity is he? Doesn't feel relevant, does it? <sighs> it's just not good. It's not good. Yeah, it's like they've tried to throw in these buzzwords for, like, the modern times. Even the American office, and I know it was a different time, but some of the episodes now, like, if you go back and watch them, they've cut parts out to fit in with Have the... They? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, on Netflix or something? Yeah, but that was in a time where they at least weren't afraid of this PC brigade bullshit. Like, this has been made in the PC brigade bullshit era. Mm. They have scripted this around being PC, and it sucks a dick. <laughs> Hannah is a riddle, swallowed by an idiot, and shut out by a moron. Those people are like family to me, and I won't let you throw them out on the street. The daily commute is killing me. Is someone sleeping in here? No one even knowing about it. It's not a big deal. It's been four nights this week. It's nothing. Yeah, see, I told you, that's Creed. Yeah. So he's eating weird shit all the time. He's sleeping in the office. That's obviously Creed. Yeah. It's awake, but I want people to feel awake. I don't want to be on the committee. I understand that, but you're also the oldest and closest to the end, so I would really love your buy-in on this event, okay? If I die while I'm still working here, please don't let this happen. <laughs> Promoting women into <laughs> positions of power. That's my mantra, really. I've never heard you say that. Oh, my back hurts from carrying all my sisters <laughs> all the time. Ow! Oh, fuck right off. I kind of just expected this, though. Mm hmm It's going to be littered with this bullshit. God, if you're going to try and make a feminist joke, at least make it fucking funny. I'm sure there is a feminist joke out there somewhere that I would laugh at, that I would find hilarious even. Mm hmm That ain't one of them. But that's not it. I don't like her. You know what? The cringe with Steve Carell and Ricky was effortless. Yeah, I think that's it. She's you... trying really, really hard. And I know the other characters, they did the thing where they look into the camera too and they cringe too but I don't know I don't think it has anything to do with the fact she's a female it just doesn't feel effortless like the others did mm. okay well I'll see you around yeah you definitely will because I'll be at my desk all day <laughs> <laughs> okay well I'll, I'll see you there you will for the next nine hours <laughs> So that was the best two minutes they had to offer. I suppose you don't have to put your best two minutes into the preview, but that's really what you chose for the preview? Like you were in the editing room and you went, yeah, this is the two minutes that's going to sell this. There was not one joke in there. I didn't laugh once. No, not once, no. It's shameful too. I feel ashamed that this is Australian and this is what we've put on offer for one of the greatest shows ever, The Office, which people around the world are going to be watching. You know what this has vibes of? Remember when the Americans tried to do Cat 
Kath and Kim. Yes. That was fucking shit. That was so shit. They just didn't get it. And I think that cringe thing, like it worked really well with Ricky Gervais, obviously, because he created it. But then the Americans took that and they did it really, really well. Like Steve Carell does cringe super well. Yeah. And you'll remember in the start, it was pretty much, you know, just carbon copy. It was like that, I think it was the pilot and it was just the same. You know, you could tell the actors were really trying to base their characters off the English version. But then it didn't take long. Within about four or five episodes in the first season, you could really see they were moving in their own direction. Yeah. I think Australian cringe is just a lot different. Like going back to the Kath and Kim Australia versus America one, the Americans can't replicate Australian cringe. And I don't think Australia can replicate American cringe either. And the British was just like a fucking a diamond in the rough. Mm. So yeah, that was really, really disappointing. I'm not looking forward to this. And I think it's just a bit of a money grub. Yeah. And I will give it a go. I will watch the first episode. And if I find that I want to bash myself in the head with a meat cleaver over and over again, I will not watch the second episode. Yeah. Anyway, we had to say something about this because this is like one of our favourite shows. Yeah. All right. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Ta-ta. Bye. See ya. Session, session. Give me better ties, give me better ties. Session.